During their last earnings report on July 30th, Apple announced a 4 to 1 stock split. And this means that each Apple shareholder of record at the market close on August 24th will receive a three additional shares for every share held on the record date. Trading will then begin on a split adjusted basis on August 31st. Then yesterday we got some news that Tesla was following suit, but they'll be doing a 5 for 1 stock split. And this means for every Tesla share that you hold at market close on August 21st, Tesla will issue you four additional shares. And like Apple, trading will begin on a stock split adjusted basis on August 31st. Well, you would think looking at this, if I have four shares for every one share today or five shares for every one share today, naturally the value of the company changes proportionally as well. So naturally there shouldn't really be any reason for the stock to move higher or lower or really have any significant movements just based on this news alone, right? But here's Apple's stock performance since this was announced, up 13.7%. But this is a bit skewed because this was coupled with their earnings report. They had an extremely strong earnings and this actually saw a run in the stock price. And I think it was actually mostly the earnings that contributed to this run versus the actual stock split. But then we look at Tesla stock and the stock is up a massive 6.5% after hours once they announced a five to one split and there was no other relevant news released on tesla last night so this move was purely on the excitement around a stock split so because of this i'm getting a ton of questions from both my vip group members and from you guys here on youtube should we be buying these stocks now that they announced a split should i sell my shares what should i do honestly guys i want to provide you a ton of value in this video so if you appreciate it just smash that like button down below let's get into a couple things i want you to understand first about stock splits and then we'll quickly look at some historical data on past stock splits to give us an idea of what could happen this time around so in general here's what you need to know about stock splits number one and there's no change to a company's market cap on this move there's more shares issued but the sum of the value of the new shares equals to that of the old shares thus the market cap remains the same Second, the main reason a company does a stock split is to make their shares appear like they are cheaper now. And this in turn attracts a lot of newer investors, especially retail investors, and as a result, could end up with a lot more money flowing into these stocks. So think of it this way, Tesla right now is trading at around $1,400 per share, and after the five for one split, each share will be trading at $280 per share, but you'll be getting five shares, so it's still gonna be the value of $1,400 per share. If you're holding a share today. But now if you're a retail investor and you look at Tesla stock, you're like, oh man, it's $1,400. Can't really buy a share of that. But if you see it at $280, it's a lot more affordable and people are going to start putting money into that. And I see this trend time and time again. If you look at the most popular stocks on Robinhood, they're typically cheap stocks. They're $10 stocks, $20 stocks, and investors just flock to these cheap names because they're seemingly cheap. And there's the you know illusion that a $10 stock can easily double to $20 versus a $200 stock doubling to $400. Guys, share price does not mean anything on its own. If you look at the market cap, for example, if a company is trading at $5 per share, but they have a $1 trillion market cap, it's really difficult for them to double that market cap than for a company that's trading at $500 per share but has a $20 billion market cap. It's all relative and market cap is the key thing to keep note of here. When it comes to stock splits, there's also something called a reverse stock split. Now, I don't want to really get into too much detail with this here in this video because it's not really relevant to what's happening with Tesla and with Apple stock. But if you do want to understand this a bit better, I do cover it in a previous video. So check that out. Leave a link in the description down below. And I talk about why reverse splits are really not that great for investors. Okay, so now you understand stock splits, but what's the benefit of these moves really for investors like you and me? Well, if you're a long-term investor, like, you know, I, I look at stocks for multi, multi years, possibly even decades, there's not really much change to your investment strategy. Even if you're a short-term investor in stocks, not really too much changes with your investments there. As long as you're holding the stock on its record date of the split, so 24th of August for Apple and 21st for Tesla, then when you wake up on August 31st, First, you're gonna see the new share price traded but you know don't get excited don't be like wow Apple's so cheap now I'm gonna buy more shares or don't do the opposite where you're like oh my god Apple dropped from $400 per share down to $100 per share I lost a lot of money all this no no we just talked about it the market cap remains the same value remains the same it just the actual share price dollar amount changes proportionally 
Now, a couple of things I can think of when it comes to stock splits is, um, you know, if you have, say, a share of Tesla today, $1,400, to sell out a bit of Tesla is not really an option for most investors. You have to sell out a full share, and that's $1,400. What if you wanted to just trim out, you know, $500 of Tesla? Don't really have an option in most cases. But after the stock split, you can slowly sell out a few shares and, you know, reduce your exposure to Tesla, for example, if you wanted to. So that's one benefit. The other benefit I can see is around covered calls. So the way covered calls work is you actually write option contracts and you sell that for premium. Now to do this, you need to have at least a hundred shares per contract. That's just how options work. One option contract is a hundred shares. So if you have less than that, you can't do this strategy. If you have more than that, great, it's 100 shares per option. So say you're holding 25 shares of Apple and then it splits four to one. That means after that split and it's reflected in the stock and all that stuff, you'll have 100 shares of Apple and you're gonna be able to write covered calls. So that's a big advantage that a lot of people overlook. And that's something that you could look into now if you have at least 100 shares of whatever stock you wanna write options for. There's also other option strategies out there that you can utilize, but the key is that with stock splits, it enables investors to do this. And you know, it's a good thing overall for the market. Now, of course, of course, you may be wondering, over the long term, is a stock split good or bad for a stock? How do stocks tend to perform when their stock price is split? So let's look at Apple historically here because they've done four splits in the past. One was for a seven for one split and the other three were a two for one split. And this latest one will be right in the middle with a four for one split. Here's Apple stock over the time it has been public and the stock is up over 85,600%. So clearly, even with four stock splits over this time period, the stock has continued chugging along higher and it arguably attracted a lot more investors, a lot more money into the stock, which pushed it to perform this well. So we can see here that in this case, it seemingly had a positive impact overall on the stock. But the question of course remains, will it be the same this time around? I think that it probably will as long as Apple, like the business, continues to execute well and I don't see any reason why it wouldn't. Also keep in mind that in the US you guys have fractional shares, a lot of brokers offer that, but internationally a lot of brokers do not offer fractional shares. Even here in Canada don't really have that option so we have to go out there and purchase a full share. So when it comes to expensive stocks like Tesla where it's $1,400 per share, it does make it challenging for retail investors to go out there and purchase a sizable position. To own 100 shares of Tesla at today's prices, it's a feat that most retail investors, especially beginners, don't really have the option for. But as soon as the stock splits, it becomes a lot more realistic. Keep that in mind, that's just another benefit really of a stock split and these companies do realize that and remember they're kind of global companies the stock market anyone from anywhere can really buy into these kind of stocks. so it really opens up the floor for a lot more new money to flow into these stocks which again could push these stock prices much much higher over the long term Guys, hope this video was helpful. I hope you learned a little bit more about stock splits. I'm curious to see if any of these other large tech giants are gonna do the same thing here. I have my eye on a couple of them. I think they may follow suit at some point. I don't know if they'll do it right now, but I think it is a possibility because this really creates a lot of excitement, a lot of chatter around the stock. And if your stock is kind of just there in limbo, struggling, and you want investors' interest in that, a stock split seems to be a good way to do it. Either way, guys, let me know in the comment section down below if you're going to be buying more stocks, selling your stock because of the stock split. I'd love to hear from you. Either way, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to invest positively, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.